Essential 2, Lesson 2. So everybody turn to your notes, put your date on top of the page. We're actually going to start on the table on page 6. Okay, the table on page 6, the first two columns you were supposed to start working on as you're due now. So, in ELA, and in elementary school, you've learned reading strategy. The reading strategy for this unit that I think is most beneficial is visualization. Actually picture the item that you have. And I know we all see word problems and we go, ah, and we turn into the teacher from Peanuts, wah, 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 and it doesn't make sense. And I'll tell you a secret, sometimes I feel the same way. Because that's how I was raised, almost 45 years of ugh, word problems. We're trying to break it so you're not ugh, with word problems. In fact, I actually think these word problems will be helpful because you should visualize, right, what do I have and what am I breaking it up into? So that's the question I want you to keep asking yourself, what do I have? Okay? So how many half miles are in 12 miles? So what do I have? What's my whole? Right, I have 12 miles. And I'm dividing it into halves. So 12 divided by a half. What did we discover yesterday that we could do instead of dividing it by a half? I shouldn't say instead of, but... Okay, so 12 times... We looked at yesterday when we had division. Um, two over one. Right, two over one, which is two. Okay? So instead of dividing by that fraction, <coughs> we can multiply it by the. Does anybody know what it's called? We're going to get ahead of ourselves a little bit here. That's the, the trick to help us remember the steps. But what does it mean? We're not going to say keep, switch, flip, or keep, change, flip, or anything like that. We're going to focus on what it means. We're not going to do tricks. We want to know what it is. We want to know why we're doing it. We saw in the picture yesterday why we do that. Uh, two, three, mm -hmm. When you take a number and you change it, or if you want to say, what did you say, flip in fifth grade? The reciprocal is one word, or we could call it the inverse. So dividing by the fraction is the same as multiplying by the inverse. So let's see, how many quarter hours are in five hours? So what is it that we have? What do I have for number two? Five hours. I have five hours, and I'm dividing it into... Fourths. So it's the same thing as multiplying it by the inverse. We saw that in our picture yesterday. So what's the inverse of one fourth? Four. Right. Because we know that four over one is the same thing as four. Let's continue. How many one-third cups are in nine cups? I am so excited to go home tomorrow and start cooking. I might even start the cranberry sauce with my candy pecans tonight. So, I was going to start last night when my daughter was all like, I want to help. And I was like, i got to make a full studies test. A great math test. So, nine cups. Lots of measuring over these next couple days. Hopefully, you'll all be helping out in the kitchen, helping around the house. So, what is it that I have, gentlemen? What is it that I have? What is my dividend? Uh, nine. I have nine, and I'm dividing it into one third cup. So oh, why would you multiply? Like say nine. So we can multiply by the inverse. We saw that in the model that we drew in lesson one. How many one eighths of a pizza are in four pizzas? Yummy! I'll tell you a little secret. We got a pizza for dinner last night. And I kind of had leftovers for breakfast this morning. So we had four pizzas, and we had to figure out how many slices. So four divided by one-eighth, which is the same thing as four 
times 8, right? 4 slices times 8 sliced per pie. So, Grace, you see how that's the same thing? If we had 4 pizzas and we divided them into 1 eighth, well, 4 pizzas times 8 slices, so it does mean the same thing. All right, that was a nice long pause to answer some great questions. Definitely ask questions. We're all going to be better learners for that. All right, so how many one-fifths are in seven holes? So what is it that I have? What do I have? I have seven, and I'm dividing it into fifths. So that's seven times five. So please, let's go. All right, let's take a look at the next page. Remember, we're going to keep asking ourselves, what do we have? How are we going to set this up? So like I said, the next couple of days, lots of cooking going to be going on. So Molly used nine cups of flour to bake bread. So nine cups, picture it, that's what she used. She took it out of her cabinet. She had her big container, scooped out nine cups. Nine cups is what she used. The nine cups that she used was three-fourths of the total amount she started with. So, of the total amount. What was the original amount? So, what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find the whole. Oh, how much was in the container? All right, so here's the container. She took out nine cups. So how much was in the container before she got started? So let's picture, we know that if she used nine cups and she used three fourths. <coughs> so those are the same. So let's illustrate our three fourths. Illustrate your three fourths. Now that three-fourths equals what? Think back to when we did tape diagrams back in December, uh, September. Back in December, listen to me. Back in September. What do we know? Those three-fourths equals nine. She used three-fourths of the whole container. She used nine cups. So three-fourths equals nine. We're trying to figure out what is the total? What is that total? That's what we're trying to decide. So let's see, I have nine. I have to divide it by what? Three. Nine divided by three. What is nine divided by three? three. So this is three. That's six. That's nine. We knew that. Because our constant is 3. But now to find my whole, what do I have to do? To find my whole, I have 3 times 4. So that equals 12. This is exactly what we did with our percent. This is what we have for finding the whole. Okay, we're just not using percentages. Nine is three fourths of a cup. That's what she used. Okay, we'll try some more. Does everybody have this copy down, or do you need a second? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Okay. A construction company is setting up signs on four miles of the road. If the company places a sign every one-eighth of a mile, how many signs will it need? I can already picture, what do I have? What is it that I have that I'm breaking up? I have, what do I have? What's my, what do I have? Excellent. Very good. We have four miles. So that's what I have. Now I have four miles. And I have to divide it into eight. Now I want to 
rewrite that? Because if I had to solve this, I don't write what I'm about to do. Would you guys look down? Don't write this. I'll do it in black. Black as that. Okay. So here's my four. Is that four holes? That's four holes. Gentlemen, I could take my four holes and divide them into eights. I could, I could do that. That shows four divided by eights. But what I'm trying to do is figure out how many that I need. So I know that one eighth of what number is four? I'm trying to find that number. Look, there's my is, my of. Okay, so now you may write that in your notes. Okay? So if I need to place them one eighth of a mile, how many will get me to four miles? So one eighth of what number will equal my four miles? So let's draw our one eighth. So one eighth of what number is four? One eighth is four. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-eight, thirty-two. You always want to make sure you identify your answer. Everybody did well on the last test. Most people did. And but some people lost points because they forgot to identify their answer. If I found the answer on your chart, you got partial credit. But if you didn't identify what the answer was, I can't go around guessing. So the answer is the company will need 32 signs. All right, back to pizza. George bought 12 pizzas for a birthday party. If each person will eat three eighths of a pizza, how many people can George feed with 12 pizzas? So what do we have? What is it that we have? 12 pizzas. And we have to divide it by 3 eighths. I don't write this. So imagine I have my 12 pizzas. And then I cut them into eights. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. But now everybody gets three eighths. So here's three eighths. Here's three eighths. Here's three eighths. Yeah. Yeah. And then we could count all the groups. Or we could do this three eighths. So if everybody gets three eighths of how many people? of what number is 12. So 3 eighths is 12. How many people can I divide into 3 eighths to get 12 fives? So let's draw our 3 eighths. have our three-eighths, so three-eighths is twelve. So, twelve divided by three is four. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-eight, thirty-two. So what does that thirty-two mean? What does 32 mean? Matt? Sorry. Let's go. Chase. 
Right, people. The 12 pizzas will feed 32 people. There's our answer. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. The Lopez family has adopted six miles of trail on the Erie Canal. If each family member cleans up three-fourths of a mile, how many family members will be needed to clean the adopted section? So what do we have? We have six, and we have to divide it into groups of three-fourths of a mile. So. I'm going to write in black, don't copy it. So we have to imagine, okay, three-fourths for you, three-fourths for you, three-fourths for you, three-fourths for you. So these are all people. And we have to keep going until we clean six miles. So how many people do we need? So we have to figure out, three, oops, not black, you can write this. So we need to figure out three-fourths of what number equals six, or is six. Remember, if each person is three-fourths, how many people would we need to equal six? That's what we're trying to find out. So three-fourths of a mile, so three-fourths of a mile times how many people will equal six miles. That's what we're trying to figure out. So let's use our model. Three-fourths Three-fourths is six. I see that right here. God bless. Three-fourths is six. So what is the value of each box? Or what is our constant? Two. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. So what's our answer? How can we use that to find our answer, Max? Eight what? Eight right. Alrighty then, moving right along. Margo is freezing eight cups of strawberries. If this is two-thirds of the total strawberries that were picked, how many cups of Margo, how many cups of strawberries did Margo pick? Now, wait a sec, how many cups of Margo? You <laughs> got me all frazzled now. Okay, three. Two, one, let's read through, please. We need to think about what they're asking us here. She froze eight cups. The eight cups that she froze is equal to two-thirds. So this one is back to our original. She froze two-thirds of the strawberries. So she froze two-thirds of her strawberries. The two-thirds that she froze equals eight. What is the total? So what is my constant? So if the two-thirds equals eight, what is our constant? Four. So we did eight divided by two equals four. Now we have to take our four and multiply it by three to get our total. 
So Margo picked 12 cups of strawberries. Yummy. So for this one to write an equation, two thirds of what number is eight? That's what we're trying to find out. Two thirds of what number is eight cups? So everybody, we're not packing up. We're not done. Did you write this sentence down? Some of you did not, and your binders are full. So, what is the number one question you're going to ask yourself tonight when you're doing your homework? What do we have? And then after you figure out what you have, are you breaking it up? Or, in this case, was it already broken up? So make that picture in your head. Imagine that you're doing it, and I think that will help you set up your equations. Okay, on your homework, write the sentences if you can. You must show your models for all of them. Okay?